and my actual eyesight is there's a high drive deep center go 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 we're out of here we're out of here say a playa just like they drew it up in hollywood caladros the three two swing it on this and the autobahn green wave have upset the kingsway dragons and this is it for good the autobahn green wave are back in the final four a gold pile on their side all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to dw broadcasting's coverage of men from our entire crew we'll see you tomorrow have a good one folks All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got our second game of the day right on tap. It's Cinnamon's in an Audubon right here on Dan Wilkins Broadcasting. We've been here since 10 in the morning, and we can't wait to get back on the air. We've got two more games coming up tomorrow, and that'll be it for the Ralph Shaw Tournament in the 27th Annual Edition. Cinnaminson last year played this very same game against Audubon. It was 2-2 in the bottom of the sixth when Tyler Wiltsey, the Rutgers commit and shortstop, hit a go-ahead home run down the left field line to give Audubon a 3-2 lead that they would not relinquish. As two batters later, rain would come through and that would be the end of that night. Now Audubon won the Ralph Shaw Championship last year. And if they win today, they will be facing Kingsway for the third year in a row. Bishop Eustace, for yet another time, thought they were going to have that victory right in their hands, but instead, it fell away at the 11th hour, and for the second year in a row, Kingsway walks it off in deja vu style to clinch their spot in the championship. Gabe McCracken, who has touched 86 and 87 in bullpens over the offseason, he's starting for Audubon tonight here in Game 2. Meanwhile, Cinnaminson has their year-in, year-out ace, L.C. Smith, on the hill for just their third game of the season. They played Bordentown on opening day, one of the few games in New Jersey that actually got played in the last week because of you know, a whole bunch of rain coming through and spoiling the parade. But Smith is back on the hill for the first time since Monday, and he'll have a chance to face the Audubon Green Wave for the first time since last year in 2024. We're going to take a quick break, and after that, we'll have starting lineups, first pitch, and more here from the Hank Greenberg Field. We'll be right back.
Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. In life, the road ahead is full of possibilities, but to navigate it safely, you need the right skills. Harper Driving School is the premier driving school serving Gloucester, Salem, and Camden counties. With experienced instructors, many of whom are teachers in local schools, we are dedicated to your success and will help you master the road with confidence. With an over 95% success rate of students passing their road test on their first try, you know your student will be in good hands while embarking on a huge step of their young adult lives, all while avoiding the lines at the DMV and getting insurance discounts. We chose Harper and so should you. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned full service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs.
here we are. It's opening day, unofficially, I guess, for Audubon, because they were supposed to play on Tuesday, they were supposed to play on Thursday, but with two cancellations pushed back to the end of April, they're back on the air, and for the first time, they debut their brand new bright yellow head-to-toe uniforms. First time in over a decade they've made such a drastic change, but with that being said, Cinnaminson staying traditional with their black and red jerseys. Let's take a look at their starting lineups. Brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. For Cinnaminson, led by Eric Teasdale, it's Noah Harvey, the Richmond University commit at shortstop, Matt Co uh, Mike Kulik in right field, Matt McCloskey in center field, Anthony Allison Droney at first base, Gideon Crisp at third base batting fifth. He'll be followed up by Logan Hamill behind the plate batting sixth. Zarnowski is the DH batting seventh. Tim Morell is in left field batting in the eighth position. And Dan Stavalone is the second baseman batting in the ninth spot. Your pitcher is Cinnamonson's ace as it has been for many years now, L.C. Smith. He's getting the start for Cinnamonson in their second game of the year and led by Eric Teasdale. 2014 state champions celebrating their 10th anniversary of their last state championship. But... For the Audubon Green Wave, it's Gabe McCracken on the hill. He had a .88 ERA, an astounding number last year, and he's going to look to hold up that number in his junior campaign. The infield meets with number 11. There's Connor Chester at first, Tyler Wiltsey at short, Jack Dempsey at second base, and over at third is Nick Caladros. Your outfield tonight, Charlie Capsetta in center, Trent Bannell in right, and Bryce Dempsey taking over the left field spot. But for the man who had a sub-1 ERA last year, his first chance will be a Division I prospect, Richmond commit Noah Harvey. In Game 2 of the Ralph Shaw Tournament here in 2024, 27th Annual, we had an instant classic just over an hour ago. We've let the waves settle. We've let our... We've let ourselves catch our breath and the first pitch is a strike right down the pipe. We're underway. The 0-1 from McCracken. Outside, 1-1. Noah Harvey, the senior shortstop for Cinnaminson. A commit to the Spiders down in Virginia. takes away 2-1. Cinnaminson last year 17-9. They cracked the top spot in the Burlington County preseason power rankings for Dan Wilkins Broadcasting as that one's outside. They already won their first game of the year. Technically it was a home game but it was not played at Cinnaminson High School. It was played over at the Bordentown Turf. They beat the Bordentown Scotties 7-0. A team that Audubon is also familiar with. They played them last year in May, won that game 13-3. There's a swing and a miss, count is full. Noah Harvey, the junior, 296 career average, 295 last year, 302 in his 2022 season. Five career extra base hits, 19 stolen bases, 34 for 115. with a lot of upside and potential. That's ball four. So a full count walk and Noah Harvey puts Cinnaminson in business to start tonight's activities. The wind has been fierce all day. It was blowing in when we got here around 10, 10 a.m. this morning and then it kind of did a switcheroo, a 180, and it turned around, and now it's been blowing out ever since, as you can see with the sand kicking up there in the infield. I mean, it's wild. This is 25, 30-mile-per-hour gusts. It feels like Wrigley Field, you know. I've been to Wrigley Field in mid-April. This is what it feels like. A windbreaker and sweatpants do not exactly cut it for me, but... The 1-0 to Mike Kulik. That one is in uh, in the dirt, 2-0. 
Two balls, no strikes. Runner on first for Cinnaminson, getting the party started early for the Pirates. That one catches the outside corner, two and one. Matt McCluskey, the center fielder for Cinnaminson, on deck here in the top of the first. I'm Dan Wilkins up here in the booth with Vincent Folk, my producer this afternoon. Throw over to first. Connor Chester takes it, but nothing going on there. Connor Chester, the one freshman starting on varsity this year. We didn't really have any freshmen starting on varsity last year, but now a couple of guys have broken through the the uh, ceiling and gotten themselves a varsity spot. Here comes the throw from the knees from Zimmer, and the throw is just intercepted by the wind, and that's a stolen base by Noah Harvey. I don't think there was anything he could do there. He was already a little off kilter making the throw, trying to get it from his knees and just, I mean, when you're on your knees, it's hard to get the action through. And, you know, he's he's got a good pop time back there. It's just hard to remedy. That one is just below the letters. That's a strike call, two and two. Bullock to be followed by McCloskey and Anthony Allison Droney. Swing and a mess. McCracken's got his first K of 2024. One down. Here's Matt McCloskey. one -oh. runner on second with Cinnaminson. McCracken steps off, lost his balance. Matt McCloskey, the senior outfielder. Already one for four this year with three RBIs, including a home run the fourth of his high school career had three in 2023 and he pops this one up into straightaway right Bannell ranges to his left he makes the catch runner tags and goes to third Harvey is going to get in there standing so an obvious uh, positive production from McCloskey is the second out of the frame but it puts Cinnaminson 90 feet away from a run here in the first McCloskey had three home runs last year, hit a three-run shot on opening day versus Bordentown. Last year, he also hit a home run on opening day in a 6-3 win versus Penn Saucon. Northern Burlington on April 13th, and in fact, all of his home runs came in the month of April. He was red hot, cooled off a little bit in May, but still was a big product nonetheless. Chester is going to try to backtrack this one. It's down the right field line and foul. So Allison Droney has to go back to the plate. It's 0-1. Anthony Allison Droney, the junior. Mostly known for his job as a pitcher, has a 1.48 career ERA in three seasons. Has kept that mark below two in both 2022 with an um, astounding 1.24 and a 1.77 in 2023. However, in his first season as a batter this year, guess who also hit a home run? Mr. Allison Droney. And that was a big part of that 7-0 win on Monday for Cinnaminson versus Bordentown. A shot each by Allison Droney and by McCloskey. And that was in his hitting debut because he has no prior stats on NJ.com as a batter. All just a PO. But then he comes up and... Now Eric Teasdell is putting him in the cleanup spot just like that and putting him over at first base. Two balls, one strike. McCracken in a little bit of trouble, but nothing he hasn't gotten over before. First three for Audubon in the bottom of the first will be Tyler Wiltsey, followed by Trent Bennell and Ryan Zimmer in the three spot. Here's the pitch. Floated out towards left center field. Going to be a tough play for Dempsey, but instead Copsetta takes it over in center, and the side is retired. Cinnaminson leaves the runner on third. Unfortunately, couldn't get a run across. 
One half frame done here in Audubon. No score. Bottom of the first, Tyler Wiltsy in the bright green and gold. Let's take a look at that Audubon Green Wave starting nine presented by Tommy D's Home Improvement. In your starting top three, it's going to be Tyler Wiltsy at the shortstop spot, the Rutgers commit batting leadoff. He'll be followed by Trent Bannell in right field. Ryan Zimmer behind the plate batting third. Lance Furness at the DH spot batting cleanup. Nick Caladros at third batting fifth. The Dempsey brothers back-to-back, -back, just like the Mishuli brothers from the Eustace game. There's sixth and seventh. Jack Dempsey at second base, Bryce Dempsey in left. Charlie Capsetta in center field batting eighth, and the freshman the phenom, uh, excuse me, I can't even speak right, Connor Chester is at the ninth spot at first base. Count is 1-0 as that one misses to Wiltsey, the Rutgers University commit. He got a good look at his future teammate Landon Mack for Bishop Eustis and their 4-3 loss to Kingsway. I mean, it was unbelievable. You know, Landon Mack was so dominant, we were almost sure that Eustis was going to run away with it. He struck out eight batters in three innings, touched 95 miles per hour, and the Rutgers commit um, hit a home run of his own with the wind blowing out in the fifth. So he gave two of Eustis's three RBIs and over 75% of their total strikeouts across their entire pitching staff. But L.C. Smith, Cinnaminson's ace, on the hill, but he is quickly behind in the count, 3-0. Very rarely do you see a pitcher throw back-to-back -back games, but when game one is on Monday and game two is on Saturday, you can kind of afford to do that. He threw five scoreless innings in the 7-0 win for Cinnaminson over Bordentown on Monday as he fires a fastball from the righty to the righty. 2.65 career ERA, he's been getting better by the year. 2022, 3.31 mark, 2.30 in 2023 with 56 strikeouts, 150 in his high school career, including eight of them on Monday versus Bordentown. Three balls, two strikes. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Comes back from 3-0 and gets a huge strikeout. There's one away. Make that number 151 for Mr. Smith. And here's Trent Bannell. Probably one of the most energetic baseball players that you will ever see. We've seen it during the scrimmages. You know, the guy during infield outfield was basically losing his voice, just shouting, let's go, let's go. And we've seen it. He's a three-sport athlete. He's the goalkeeper for the boys' soccer team and was top five in the Colonial Conference in saves last year. And... 
also runs winter track and plays baseball. Now, in his freshman year, he also played basketball. He's like the do-it-all athlete. You know, he comes from a great family. He's got four different siblings. And he's in a big household. But this time, that's a ground out 5-3. Two down. So a strikeout and a ground out set L.C. Smith up for success here versus the number three hitter, Ryan Zimmer. The class of 2024 senior, currently uncommitted, but definitely has the potential to go places. He debuted on the Hill last year, not at the same time pitching and catching, obviously. That, that requires some, uh, some telepathy, but he threw 11 innings last year, had an ERA over five. but also is the quarterback of the junior varsity football team. I mean, I remember it very well. He just kind of he, he decided on a whim. He said, you know what, I'm going to play football this year. And that's the thing about Audubon. You know, less than, less than 800 students in the building from 9 to 12. You know, there's obviously more if you include 7th and, seventh and 8th, but that's mostly separated. And, you know, like these guys, almost all of these guys are multi-sport athletes. Tyler Wiltsey also leading goal scorer in, on the soccer team, and in 2022 accounted for over 70% of Audubon's entire goals on the season. Trent Bannell, like we said, three-sport athlete. Zimmer, two-sport athlete. Gabe McCracken, also another soccer player and also a winter track runner. Nick Caladros, again, soccer player. Jack Dempsey and Bryce Dempsey, both on the football team. Charlie Copsetta uh, also does... Um, football and basketball or uh, excuse me not basketball but he does um, something else as well in the winter that's a walk to Zimmer takes four of them and that will be a free pass for Zimmer and Connor Chester as well a starter on the basketball team this past season and it's honestly a miracle that he's playing on the field because in in the first practice of the 2023 winter season he broke both of his wrists dunking in a basketball practice, was out for about 75% of the season, came off the bench, and then when Finn King, the junior, got hurt late in the basketball season, he came off the bench with a great six foot four forward as a freshman, so he still has plenty of room to grow, and now continues to be a big multi, multi-sport athlete. I mean, like I said, everybody except one person in this lineup is a multi-sport athlete at Audubon. And that's what makes, you know, schools like this incredibly special is that, you know, everybody knows everybody, whether it's in the fall, winter, or spring, or even in the summer. Smith, with a delayed delivery, misses low. And it's 1-1. One, one. So Tyler Wiltsey struck out. Trent Bannell grounded out to third. And now Ryan Zimmer, his pinch runner will go, and he's going to get in there uncontested. Jason Stockland running down at second base for him. He gets in there easily. Two balls, one strike to the cleanup man, Lance Furness. Swing and a miss out in front of that one. Smith only surrendered two unearned runs last year. 16 runs total, 14 runs allowed in, four, in 42 and two-thirds innings. So he has been either responsible for it all or responsible for nothing. There's a strike three on the outside corner. Furness goes down on strikes. Smith strikes out two. And Audubon mirrors Cinnaminson, leaving a runner in scoring position. One frame through out of seven here at the Hank Greenberg Complex. It's no score.
Welcome to the home of Audubon Baseball right here at Hank Greenberg Field. It was the bright, bright, bright yellow jerseys. You know, this is going to take some time to get used to, I'll tell you that. <laughs> they, look, they look nice. I think it's just, it's something where you're so used to something for so long that just the slightest change is all of a sudden foreign to you. First pitch misses to Cinnamons in the start to second. It'll be five, six, and seven. Gideon Crisp, followed by the catcher Hamill and the DH Zarnowski. Crisp grounds it out to short on a crisp ground ball. Throw to first is in time. Chester takes it one away. Whenever I hear the, I, this is the first time I've seen Gideon play. But whenever I hear Gideon Crisp from now on, I'm going to think of um, Disney Springs, Gideon's uh, Bakehouse. The uh, the half pound cookies that they sell. Oh yeah, yeah. Because the family and I went to December uh, Disney in December, and when we went to Disney Springs, they have this they have this store there. You can only buy six cookies per person. Oh. And they're six dollars a piece, which sounds crazy, but remember they're a half pound. They're like the size of my fist. It's crazy. But. Yeah, it's Gideon's Bakehouse down there in, uh, in Disney Springs. Although I would love to be in Disney right now with this uh, with this weather. It's been, it was okay yesterday until the sun went down and I was just freezing for the Haddon Township Eastern game. You know, it, it, was, it was just wild, <laughs> but that one's outside, one and two. L.C. Smith gave up 17 pitches in his first frame. As we said, through five innings yesterday, I'm sorry, not yesterday, five innings Monday, versus Bordentown. Cinnamonson, as we said, 17 and nine last year, six and two in their BCSL Liberty Division, which, I mean, there, there's no hiding the fact that the BCSL isn't the strongest South Jersey conference, but they still have good competition. You know, they're up there with Burlington Township, Delran, Bordentown, and Northern Burlington. As there's a ground ball, Caladros dives. He gets up with it. Throw to first is not in time. Infield single. Off the bat of Hamill. And he gets Cinnamonson's first hit of the night after a bit of a miscue by Caladros, but it will be scored in our book as an infield single. Only one team finished below 500 in the Burlington County Liberty Division last year, and that was Northern Burlington at 11 and 14. Still a respectable mark, but they were one and seven in divisional play. Burlington Township was 16 and six. They technically tied the division with Cinnamonson because in their interdivision play, in their divisional play, they were both six and two. Cinnamonson 17 and nine, Delran 14, eight and one. As here comes a swing and a miss, Dempsey applies the tag, he is safe. And the count is 0-2. Bordentown was 13 and 13 last year. Swing and a miss. He got him. Two away. Strikeout number two for McCracken. Running at second for Hamill is going to be the replacement for number three, which was Ryan Horner the last couple of years. It is now Paul McGinn, the junior. Ryan Horner now a big DWB follower. He uh, is over at Gwyn and Mercy now, the Griffins over in Eastern Pennsylvania. That's a line drive and Connor Chester takes it in to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the second. Cinnamonson still yet again leaving a runner in scoring position. We'll see what Audubon can do.
Here we are, bottom of the second inning. Audubon and Cinnamons and knotted up at zero apiece. L.C. Smith back out for another frame here versus the number five hitter, Nick Caladros. This broadcast is brought to you by Harper Driving School. Drive it to success today by scheduling your appointment and your road test with Harper Driving School. Students pass their road test on their first try over 95% of the time. Book an appointment today at Suite 4 of the Total Turf Experience Complex in Pittman, right off of Lambs Road. And folks, for the viewers at home, we are always selling commercial space to help with My College Fund and also to help with uh, our DWB production as well. If you're a small business owner and you're interested in helping us out, uh, we'll film a commercial for you. Rates start for as low as $250 for six months. Um, you can send us an email with any inquiries at thedanwilkinshow at gmail.com. All of our social medias, including our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more, are in the description of our YouTube videos. Two balls, one strike to Nick Caladros. Kicks and delivers from Smith. There's a strike, two and two. Cinnaminson will begin their third frame with the 9-1-2 and two slots as Caladros gets it into left field. He pokes a base hit. There's his first of the year. Nick Caladros gets Audubon their first knock of 2024, and it comes from the Greek freak himself over at the hot corner. So Caladros gets a knock, and here is Jack Dempsey. Throw over to first, nothing going. Dempsey showing bunt, Smith ready to go. And Dempsey calls time. See, this is the mind game part of baseball, you know? This is, I mean, Dempsey's not known for being a prolific bunter in his career, but He's definitely got that tool in his arsenal if he chooses to do it. Infield is way in, about halfway up the line. He pulls back. And it is called a strike, 0-1. Dempsey ropes one out towards shallow right field, going over and making the basket catch will be the right fielder Kulik, one away. I mean, the wind is gonna be a, a crazy factor tonight. You know, it was in game one, we got here around 10 a.m., wind was blowing straight in, did a 180, now it was blowing straight out. That was probably responsible for the Landon Mack home run in the fifth, but I mean, hey, give credit where it's due. These guys are playing to the best of their abilities with the conditions that we have. Throw over to first, not in time. Smith really working Calandros over there with a couple of pickoff moves. But Cinnaminson left the runner in scoring position in both the first and the second. And now Smith with Dempsey showing bunt. <laughs> I love that from the Audubon dugout. It seems like every year they get just more and more energetic. I don't know what they're feeding kids for breakfast, but. <laughs> Bryce Dempsey showing bunt again. Those mind games at work. He makes contact, but it's foul. 0-1. Bryce Dempsey, the senior class of 24. To my knowledge, he reclassed last year. He was originally class of 25, and then he moved up one year. Batted 334 in his debut season in 2023. 11 for 30, uh, excuse me, 11 for 32. Nine runs scored, 11 base hits, four RBIs, and three stolen bases. Also with a 3.86 ERA on the hill and a small sample size. One ball, one strike. L.C. Smith ready to throw his 30th pitch of the night. 
He'll try it again. Runner goes. Here comes the throw down. It's going to be in on time, but not in time. And that's going to be a stolen base for Caladros. I mean, there's really no better way to describe it. It's just he had a good throw, and Caladros just beat him to the punch. I mean, you know, obviously the, the work that I've seen out of the catcher Logan Hamill has been limited, but he seems like he's got a really good pop time, and, you know, especially after they lost a lot of their guys last year, Hamill, last year in 2023, had a very small sample size, two for three, with a single, a double, and an RBI, so a 667 average. But you consider last year's numbers... And you consider they had Kyle McDonough behind the plate last year. They also had Kyle McDevitt as well, Luis Sanchez. They had two seniors who were basically the catcher battery, McDonough and McDevitt. So Cinnaminson lost a lot of their guys. Here's a fly ball right center field. It's caught by Kulik, bringing the runner back to home base. And there's two down. So both Dempsey's go down, and here's the lefty, Charlie Capsetta. He was sidelined for most of 2023 with a quad injury. But he has come back in full form. The Camden County College Juco commit. Unfortunately for him, though, uh, 5 for 41, a 122 average. However, seven walks, four hit by pitches, six stolen bases. I mean... The potential is there for sure, and he has really shown that he can uh, that he can swing the bat. But plate discipline is really what wins him over. Like that ball there, I think 80, 90 percent of hitters are going to swing at that first pitch. I mean, maybe I might be wrong, but the way that Cop set a plays, especially in a platoon mark, he does especially well in lefty lefty matchups where, like, he's only going to swing the bat if he really knows that he's going to rip one. On the outside corner, one and one from Smith. So two down after the Dempsey brothers went down in order on two flyouts. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. Oh, one ball, two strikes, excuse me. Capsetta with a runner in scoring position and curveball outside, 2-2. Two, two. Smith is set, brings the ball to his glove. 2-2 two -two on its way. From the stretch, that one's high and away, 3-2. and two. I mean, Smith right now, I think what he's just got to work on is, is his control. It's not like he's been bad, but you just got to throw strikes when it matters. You know, full counts are not going to be your friend, and that's why he's at 35 pitches in the second. It's not a terrible number by any means. But if you're going to keep this game scoreless, he's got to throw strikes just like that. Capsetta chases the fastball high, and L.C. Smith gets out of the jam. Four times have a team left a runner on second base or further in scoring position. Sidiminson's done it twice, and now Audubon's done it twice. We are still looking for our first run after two. We'll be right back. In life, the road ahead is full of possibilities. But to navigate it safely, you need the right skills. Harper Driving School is the premier driving school serving Gloucester, Salem, and Camden counties. With experienced instructors, many of whom are teachers in local schools, we are dedicated to your success and will help you master the road with confidence. With an over 95% success rate of students passing their road test on their first try, you know your student will be in good hands while embarking on a huge step of their young adult lives, all while avoiding the lines at the DMV and getting insurance discounts. We chose Harper and so should you.
Top of the third inning right here on Dan Wilkins Broadcasting. It's a scoreless game between the Cinnamons and Pirates and the Audubon Green Wave here in the opening round of the 27th annual Ralph Shaw Tournament. First pitch swing and a miss. 0-1. For the consolation game and the championship game tomorrow, consolation game will start at 12 noon on Sunday. Championship game will be at 3 p.m. So everything the same as today but pushed back one hour. Slider from McCracken catches the outside corner. It's 0-2. Audubon and Cinnaminson going to bring up their 9-1 and 2 in this frame. Harvey on deck with Dan Stravalone at the dish. Stravalone had two at-bats last year. One of them resulted in a walk, so a small sample size. Looking oh. to play a full season this year. Fly ball straight away center. Can of corn for Copseta, and there's one away. Cinnamonson with no runs on one hit. No errors on either side. And strikeout number two. He's got two tonight so far in the early campaign. That one misses. Audubon's going to have a busy April after opening week got swept away. April 2nd was supposed to be their opening day versus Paulsboro. And then that was canned. One and one. The last time Audubon played a non-conference opponent on opening day, you have to go back to 2017, when Audubon opened up their season versus Overbrook in a 12-1 victory, with Overbrook being... Actually, no, hold on, I apologize, because at that time, Overbrook was still in the Colonial Conference. So they are now in the Tri-County. They did a swap with the Tri-County in 2018. Overbrook joined the Tri-County Conference Gloucester City, joined the Colonial for all sports. Now, Gloucester City still operates in the Tri-County for some sports, but at least for baseball and uh, all the others that we know of, they are in the Colonial. So, in that case, you have to go all the way back, oh boy, to 2010. Popped up right center field. This is hit well. Bannell, nor Copset is going to get there. It's going to be extra bases. Copset fumbles with it in right center. Rounding second. Harvey's going to third. He's going to have a three-bagger. Noah Harvey rips one in the right center. And after the ball got fumbled around a couple of times, that's a three-base hit, a triple for Noah Harvey, the Richmond commit. I mean, nobody called for it. I think it was a very late realization that the ball was going to be over their head, and he would have easily held them at second if it weren't for the fact that that ball got tossed around a little bit in the outfield. So they'll run that back at the top of the order with Mike Kulik, the right fielder. First pitch from McCracken to Kulik. There's a fly ball. Hit well in the center field. Copseta backtracking. This one is going to be caught. He makes up for that mistake, and it's going to be a sack fly. It's 1-0 Cinnaminson. After two innings in a row of leaving runners in scoring position, Cinnaminson makes up some unfinished business, and it's 1-0. Made a nice catch backtracking, and... I mean, look, that was a good play. Especially with the wind blowing out, things are going to be pretty unpredictable on that fly ball by Kulik. So two down now. 
for the number three hitter, Matt McCluskey. Drops it in there, 0 and 1. Audubon will have their number nine hitter, Connor Chester, followed up by Tyler Wiltsey and Trent Bennell, 9, 1 and 2, for the Green Wave. Although it doesn't feel right calling them the Green Wave when a very insignificant part of their jersey is green. I feel like they should be the Gold Wave. Audubon is one of three schools in New Jersey to be known as the Green Wave. The other two are up in the shore, Long Branch and Del Barton. Long Branch actually uh, takes inspiration from the Tulane logo, which is also the Green Wave. Del Barton has their own original thing. No balls, two strikes. Gabe McCracken working here now with no traffic on and one run on the board for Cinnaminson. Yeah, it's unsure whether that triple is going to be scored a triple or whether it's going to be a, a, a double E8. I'm not sure. They might just give them the benefit of the doubt and call it a triple. I'm not sure. One ball, two strikes. McCracken working through the middle of the order here for the Pirates. One ball, two strikes, kicks and delivers. Swing and a miss. He got him in the dirt. Zimmer gathers, throws the first, and Chester takes it in. It's in time. Side retired. We go to the bottom of the third. Cinnamonson gets their first run of the board on a sack fly to center. We'll be right back after this. The houses lining up Hampshire Avenue. They are getting a front row seat to this Ralph Shaw tournament here in 2024. You got to imagine that first house next to the batting cages has probably got a lot of replaced windows over the years and probably a lot of angry noise complaints as well. Here's Connor Chester in his first varsity at bat. He got some action in the scrimmages, but this is his first one that will count in the scorebooks. It's versus L.C. Smith, and he takes down 1-0. Connor Chester, you know, when I started out covering, like, Little League games in, like, 2016, 2017, this was the first guy that really caught my attention as the next big thing in Audubon baseball. And he's going to rocket one off of Smith's ankle, and he's going to get tagged out at first. So it's going to be a painful ground out. And hopefully Elsie Smith is okay. He's. Did you get that? No, it's too late. It's too late. So Elsie Smith being checked out there at first base by Coach Teasdale. I mean that one got him right in the ankle, and it deflected off of him right down the first base line. I mean, that's got to hurt. And that, I think it was his right foot, which would be his plant foot. 
not the pivot foot. Actually, no, it will be uh, the other way around, but still, for a righty. Looks like he is going to continue unscathed, although you do have to worry about if that's going to affect more, you know, minor parts of his mechanics. He's going to throw a pitch there just to make sure he's good. And we'll go back to work in the top of the order. So Tyler Wiltsey comes up to the dish here after striking out the first time at the hands of LC. Of course, L.C. Smith, a bit of an abbreviation. Charles Smith is his uh, government name, if you will, but not sure. I guess it's I guess it's just L. Charles Smith, but he goes by L.C., and it's 1-0 to Wiltsey. Breaking ball catches the zone, 1-1. One one. Wiltsey and then Trent Bannell coming up next for Audubon. Here's the pitch. Skips away. Two and one. Takes that one in. Three and one. Ball four, Tyler Wiltsey gets a free pass. With one away, here's Trent Bannell. Obviously that control is gonna be a point of concern here for LC going forward, just because you don't know if that ankle is just sore or if there's something wrong and right now he's just okay because he's playing off the adrenaline. Because there's some pitchers who I've seen, they take a nasty hit, they say they're fine, and then a couple of batters later just completely melt down because that adrenaline has worn off hard. And then that pain just starts to just starts to come right in. I mean, I'm sure he's not peachy keen right now. Bannell calls time. But Audubon being led by Rich Haran, one of the winningest head coaches in South Jersey. Of course, there's guys like Sam Tropiano, Rich Bender, and Lee Ware that are South Jersey coaching legends. But Rich Haran, eight state titles, the most of a public school in Jersey, including the most recent ones in 2011 and 2012. Let's take a look at that list, shall we? I mean, you've got just some of the best of the best to ever play the game. You'll call it South Jersey's best, though. I mean, he's fifth all-time behind Russ Spicer, who was a head coach over at Haddonfield, and Cinnaminson. That one got Bannell in the foot, and that's a hit by pitch. He's loving it. <laughs> Give a little chatter back to his dugout. And the umpire is walking over to Rich Haran. Not sure what the deal is here, but we were just talking about Rich. 592 career wins. He's eight away from 600. Now Eric Teasdale is going to talk to his man, L.C. Smith, with two runners on, thanks to a walk to Wiltsy and a hit by pitch to Smith, uh, rather to Bannel. Although, you could say that Smith was also hit by a pitch, just of his own doing, you know? But I'm not I'm not sure what the deal was that he talked to Haran for. Because Bannell was fired up and but he wasn't directing it at Cinnaminson. He was doing it at his dugout. Cause Bannell's just one of those rah rah guys. You know, he's he's a team leader and he does what he can to make sure that the energy is at hundred percent. But he doesn't direct that at the other team. Sometimes he's at the receiving end of insults from the other team just because of his style of play and his emotion, his just raw, unfiltered emotion. But, I mean, he's just, you know, he's one of those guys that 
he gives you the energy that you need and there's a reason for it. So L.C. Smith will stay in the game. No work yet, neither bullpen. Although I would imagine if this trend continues for the green wave that Eric Teasdale might want to bring a pitcher and catcher out as basically an emergency solution if, if Smith starts to break down. But he's got two on, one, one out. And Ryan Zimmer at the dish. First pitch to the senior catcher, Zimmer. Runner goes. Both runners go. They try to get the lead, and he's safe. So everybody moves up 90 feet, and now two runners are in scoring position, making the opportunity even greater for Zimmer. No balls, one strike. Smith steps off. This broadcast is brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. Make your dream kitchen come true today with wholesale kitchen cabinets and countertops at heavily discounted rates. We'll talk about it after the pitch. That one's downstairs. Visit today for heavily discounted uh, kitchen countertops and uh, cabinets at heavily discounted rates compared to big box retailers. Visit today, 612 Creek Road in Belmar, next to the 42 on ramp. And like we said, if you're a small business owner who's interested in buying commercial space with Dan Wilkins Broadcasting, we're selling commercials for as low as $250 for a six-month package. Ground ball, out to short, picked up by Harvey. He glances home, but he makes the play, and it's a 6-3 ground out, two away. So Zimmer grounds out, and here's the cleanup man, Furness. Furness struck out swinging to end the first inning at the hands of L.C. Smith. Foul, 0-1. No balls, one strike. Down, one of one. Audubon with no runs and only one hit on the Nick Caladro single in the second inning. So Audubon has had four base runners total. Only one of them has come on, come on a hit. And now that ball gets away, but a lucky rebound. Make sure that Hamill doesn't have to apply any tags at home. It's one of one. I mean, that's the good thing about that new backstop is that two years ago, that's an easy wild pitch scoring a run. But with that padding having such a good reflex to it that the catcher can pick up the ball pretty easily and you usually don't have to worry about that. Ground ball that skips off the pitcher's mound. It's going to be a diving stop. Harvey's got it, but it stays in the infield. It's an RBI single. Lance Furness rockets one over the middle, and it's 1-1. Bannell. Now goes to third, and Wiltsy scores. So both teams have notched a run here in the first, and L.C. Smith continuing to have his back against the wall with his first earned run of the season. And it comes in his eighth inning of his senior campaign. Throw over to first. Close call, but they didn't get him. I didn't get to see that call, so. Runners on the corners, two down for Caladros. Here's the pitch from Smith. They throw over again. That was close again. Well, they know Furness isn't on the bases that often, and that's not an insult or anything. He just didn't have that much playing time last year. So if there's going to be a time to get somebody who might be a vulnerable base runner, Furness might be the guy you're looking for. Here's the pitch. Caladros takes low. That one skips in, and it's 1-0. 
Don't forget, folks, the championship game for the Ralph Shaw Tournament will be tomorrow at 3 o'clock. The third place consolation game will be at 12. So same events as today, just backed up one hour. 1-0 the pitch. Smith with traffic on. Caladros pokes it in the right field. There's a base hit. That's going to give Audubon the lead. Trent Bannell scores. And he is excited as you know what. It's 2-1. Furness moves to second. Caladros gets the run. And Eric Teasdale is going to come out. And I believe that L.C. Smith is done for the day after 53 pitches. He'll take the ball from him. And that'll be it for Mr. Smith. We go to the... Uh, we go to a, a pitching change. I got a little excited there early, but we're still in the bottom of the third. Cinnaminson brings a new arm onto the hill. We'll be right back. Audubon takes a 2-1 lead. The sun has poked out here at the Hank Greenberg Field and the new pitcher for the Cinnamons and Pirates is the man who we talked about earlier tonight and is the cleanup hitter, Anthony Allison Droney. Has had a career sub-2 ERA in three seasons. The junior with a career 1.48 pitched two innings on Monday versus Bordentown. Pitched 31 and had one walk, one strikeout. 46 career strikeouts, 42 and two-thirds innings. And he joins us with two outs in the bottom of the third. So since Allison Droney came over from, from first base, I don't know. Well, we'll actually hold off on that as oh, nice well catch over at second base to retire the side. That will send us to the fourth on a nice play by Dan Stabalone. We go to the fourth, 2-1 Audubon.
Top of the fourth inning, let's take a look at that catch by Stavlone to retire the side. Sandrone came over from, from first base. I don't know. Well, we'll actually hold off on that. Is oh, Nice okay. catch over at second base to retire the side. That will send us to the fourth on a nice play. A good catch out there. There's your DWB instant replay. And now coming up in the meat of the order for Cinnaminson. After seven men grab the bat for Audubon in the third. It's going to be four, five, and six. Allison Droney, Gideon Crisp, and Logan Hamill. Right field side, Connor Chester going out, and it drops. Foul ball. As we said, Allison Droney had a small sample size at the dish last year, but in an opening day stunner, hit a two-run home run versus Bordentown. I think the fact that Cinnaminson beat Bordentown was not the stunner. The fact that he was the one that hit a homer, along with Matt McCloskey, who's got four in his high school career, was really what was more surprising. But Bordentown is a hitter's park. It's a hitter's paradise, really. That one is high. Two balls, one strike. Another foul ball. This one's headed onto Walnut. There's a pickup truck who might get hit, and it's foul. Just missed it. It's time after this batter. We will do DWB trivia time after this batter. Two balls, two strikes. McCracken still wheeling and dealing in a 1-1 tie game. There's a line shot. Caladros can't get there. There's a base hit. Anthony Allison Droney joins us on the mound and rejoins us at the plate with a base hit. So he is one for two. But as we said, it is time for DWB trivia time. Today's question is... Outside of the United States and the Dominican Republic, which country has the most MLB players of all time? Is it A, Canada, B, Cuba, C, Japan, or D, Venezuela? The answer will be revealed in the bottom of the fourth inning. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that banter between Trent Bannell and Charlie Copsetta. They were just talking to each other and... And Charlie said, why does it always have to be the wind picking up when we're in the field and not when we're at the plate? Jeez. Oh, boy, wow. <laughs> it has really picked up. There's going to be a ground ball. This could be two. Wiltsy flips to second for one. On the first, that's a double play. Six, four, three. A six, four, three double play, a traditionalist flip. And that's going to be the second out of the inning as Cinnaminson is halted right there. Gideon Crisp 0 for 2 now. And now this brings up the number 6 man, Logan Hamill. Hamill singled and got to second before he was stopped in the second inning. Righty takes it outside. Hamill rockets one. There's a base hit in the right field. The catcher's two for two, and he's got himself another knock. Ropes it down the right field line, and he puts Cinnamonson back in business here with two down. And you got to think about what would be the case if that double play doesn't happen. You've got two runners on and even a better chance to tie the game, but Audubon has the one up now. 2-1 in the bottom of the, or rather in the top of the fourth inning. Quickly two down as Gabe McCracken has eclipsed his 50th pitch of the afternoon. And here's the delivery. Ground ball over the middle. wiltsy has got this one and he tags the bag himself to retire the side. Audubon takes care of business, but Sidemanson puts two hits on the board. It stays 2-1 going to the bottom of the fourth inning.
bottom of the fourth inning, it's time for DWB Trivia Time. Today's question is, outside of the United States and the Dominican Republic, which country has the most all-time Major League Baseball players? Is it A, Canada, B, Cuba, C, Japan, or D, Venezuela? Vince, what's your guess? Uh, I got to do uh, Venezuela. You're going to say Venezuela? Well, you will be correct. Venezuela is third outside of the Dominican Republic. Somebody out there just did a fist bump, so I think he got it right as well. Really, Cuba? Cuba. But the United States, out of the 22,000 to ever play Major League Baseball, over 18,000 have come from the United States. Nineteen thousand one hundred and sixty seven from the US, eight hundred and ninety five from the Dominican Republic, four hundred and seventy six from Venezuela. That one misses in. That's a four pitch walk to Dempsey. Three hundred and eighty five for Cuba, so Cuba is fourth all time. Canada two hundred and sixty four, Mexico one hundred and forty seven, and Japan only eighty. Wow. But you gotta remember that here's the thing, the first Major League Baseball player from Japan didn't come here until 1964 with Masanori Murakami of the San Francisco Giants. And then after that, there were three more players that were born in Japan but were not Japanese. They were the children of U.S. servicemen who were stationed overseas in Japan. But after Masanori Murakami in 1964, the next guy to come from Japan that was actually Japanese and not a child of a, of a U.S. military member was Hideo Nomo, who made his debut with the Dodgers in 1995, and that was a big deal. That was a big deal for Nomo. And everybody else after that, you know, out of the 80 Japanese players to come from the country, over 80% of them were debuted after the year 2000. Throw to first, not in time. Dempsey dives back in safely. Copsetta shows bunt. Another throw, not in time. Cinnaminson has been dead set on pickoff throw after pickoff throw. It doesn't hurt with how fast Dempsey is, but sometimes those things can go awry in the wind. Copsetta shows bunt, and he takes strike two. But as, as we said, 65 of the 80 players to come from Japan debuted after 2000. You know, the whole revolution of, oh, that, ooh, that one hit Copsetta, and he gets on first base. But the whole revolution of Japanese players longing to play in America is, is relatively new. You know, if there was a Shohei Otani in, you know, 1980, he probably would have just stayed in Japan. He probably wouldn't have, uh, he probably wouldn't have made the switch. Because international players weren't embraced as much in Major League Baseball as they are today. I mean, obviously, you've got your Dominican Republic guys and your, you know, your Puerto Ricans, your Mexicans, whatever, and everybody else. But it was common to see players from Latin America back then, but not really anywhere else. Not Europe, not Asia, not Australia. You know, when that mass travel and the scouting became popular, you know, for that international crowd in the, in the 90s is when you saw players from South Korea coming over when you saw players from Japan. Two runners on after Copsetta got hit by a pitch and Connor Chester fouls it back. One and one. So there have only been six countries to produce over 100 Major League Baseball players. Puerto Rico does have 304, but that's not technically a country. With that being a U.S. territory. Allison Droney already up to 11 pitches. 
Here's the 1-1 one -one with two on in a one-run game. Chester takes a low strike, one and two. Here's the one, two, Chester grounds at five. Outside, two and two. Chester swings and misses, and he got him one away. After a bit of a rocky start, Allison Droney gets back in business. After a walk and a hit by pitch, he strikes out the freshman Chester to bring up the Rutgers commit, Tyler Wiltsey. They're going to call a balk. They call a balk against Allison Droney. And that puts two runners in scoring position here. And Eric Teasdale wants an explanation as to why. They're, from what I'm hearing from the umpire, it's because he moved his shoulder irregularly. Balk rules are very complicated, even as somebody who has yeah. studied the game for seven or eight years now, and there's people who have studied the game for 30 years, and balks are still not concrete to them. You know, it's one of the most uh -huh. controversial calls an umpire can make, and now Eric Deesdale still wanting an explanation... And he's, you can tell the tension's getting, getting high here. Because this is big. It's not like it's a 10-0 game. It's a one-run game in the middle innings. And you just moved two runners over to put your opposition in an opportunity to put themselves up by three. So Teasdale obviously wants to make sure that that call is correct. Or if he doesn't think the call is correct, he's going to get his money's worth as to why. So Teasdale walks away, and luckily nobody gets thrown out there, so cooler heads prevail. But every time a balk is called, there's, there's no, you know, unanimous decision on it. You know, the, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen a balk where everybody agrees. And now he's going no, he's to the second base the umpire. I thought he was going out for a pitching visit with Allison Droney, but no, he's trying to get an explanation from everybody on the diamond. And this is not something we usually see from Teasdale. I mean, tensions haven't really been high all game. I mean, this isn't really tensions per se, but it's more between coach versus umpire, not player versus player. So he's got his explanation, he's got his money's worth, and he's going to make sure that he doesn't have to go to the showers early. As here is Wiltsey. Still has not taken a pitch in this at bat. And, you know, when you're standing at the plate for a couple of minutes, that can sometimes throw you off your balance, especially in a situation like this where it's unprompted. Here's the first pitch from Allison Droney. You might remember last year, tie game 2 2 in the bottom of the sixth. Tyler Wiltsey had a go ahead home run versus Cinnamonson in this very scenario last year. Two batters later, rain came down, game was called, and Audubon won that game 3-2 to send them to the Ralph Shaw final. 1-1. One one. Audubon is 2-0 all-time versus Cinnaminson. They started playing each other in 2022, played them in late May. Audubon won that game 6-4, and then they won 3-2 in 2023. This is their second year playing in the Ralph Shaw. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss. One and two.
outside. 3 2. Ground ball, third base side. Picked up. Harvey throws to the plate, and now there's a log jam and a pickle. He got there around no it. One, there was no one there. He got around it. There was nobody at the plate. There was no one He scored. Up. Are you kidding me? He just came in, and it's 3-1. There was no one at the plate. <laughs> and that's the dangers of getting in a pickle is that sometimes it comes out a little sour. And that is going to be a RBI. Wiltsy gets to second. The out was recorded. Yeah, that, that was weird. They got the out at first, and then that was funky. That was very, very funky. But now we're back at it with Bannel. So Wiltsy, I'm sorry, no. They no, got, they get, yeah, Wiltsy got all the way to second. Now they feed it to the plate, he's, and he's out. He, oh, okay, he's out. But now the ball is still live. There's nobody covering second base. What is going what is on? What just happened? Bannell's at second now. What just happened? I They fed the ball to the plate. I guess whatever happened, the ball went out of play. I mean, there was nobody covering. I, I don't know. So Bannell's at second base. They got the out at home. That's that's a fact. They got the out at home. Yeah, we have two. Yeah. Wiltsy's now at third, Bannell's at second, and here's Zimmer. It's a 3-1 game. I I don't know what just happened there. I don't know how to score that. I don't know nothing. <laughs> There's a strike. <clears throat> Zimmer cracks one to short. Harvey is there. Throw oh, is a little yeah. wide. He dives. Off the bag. He's safe. The throw off. pulled him off the bag. Now that throw gets away. A comedy of errors in the infield. Now Zimmer gets to second. Both runs score. It's 5-1. The throw barely pulled the runner off the base. Or, uh, sorry, pulled the first baseman off the bag. I apologize there. That was wild. We've had a wild couple of at-bats. And obviously things are just starting to unravel, unfortunately, for the visitors. It's 4-1. Okay. So here is Furness now. As Cinnaminson looks to restore order. There's a strike. Two outs. And Audubon has put up a three spot to make it 5-1. Two of those runs coming on an E6. I mean, I don't know how you can call I don't know what you could call that. I'm, it's not a base hit, but this one is. That's a looper in the center field. For Ness, it's going to be two for three, and he's going to have two RBIs. The runner falls down, and now he will score. Unbelievable! <laughs> Stockland comes in to score. And Furness gets to second base. The runner fell down and he came in to score. I, I don't know. <laughs> RBI single for Furness. He advances to second on a miscue. And Cinnaminson with a four-run inning given up. They are in shambles right now. And it's not even Allison Droney's fault. It's the fielding. The outfielders didn't do anything wrong. The infield has just had mistake after mistake. They've been throwing the ball around the diamond instead of just eating it. And Audubon's base running has been top-notch, at least in this inning to get themselves ahead at 6-1. So here's Caladros. 
Caladros and Dempsey are the only batters to not grab a bat earlier in this inning. The leadoff man with Bryce Dempsey. They brought up seven men to the plate in the in the uh, third, and now they're bringing up a minimum of eight. There's a swing and a miss, one and one. Audubon is somebody warming in the bullpen, but they have a black hoodie on, so I can't see who they are outside. 2-1. I just feel like we need to catch our breath after this inning. I mean, again, this is not Allison Droney's fault. Most of these runs are going to go in and the scorebook is unearned because it's just been error after error after error, and it's been after the play. So you've had three straight fielder's choices, and then an RBI single turned into another extra base for Furness. But it's 3-1 and one to Caladros. Jack Dempsey on deck. He is the only man that has not grabbed the bat in this fourth inning. Here's the 3-1. Swing and a miss. They say he went around. It's 3-2. and two. So as Cinnaminson looks to catch their breath, and so do we, Morell... Um, their nine-hole hitter, Dan Stravat, and then Noah Harvey is up next. Caladros goes down, but not without damage done. A four spot for Audubon, and it's four. It's uh, six-one going to the fifth. Well, Cinnaminson will have an opportunity to right the ship here after a four-run inning by Audubon with eight men grabbing a bat. The only one that did not is Jack Dempsey. He'll lead us off along with his brother and Charlie Copsetta in the bottom of the fifth. Gabe McCracken still working, and it's a foul ball 0-1. Tim Morell is the first batter here for the Pirates in the top of the fifth. Ground ball, pass to dive in Caladros. There's a base hit, Morell. Gabe McCracken and Ryan Zimmer just having a quick chat. Just his 11th career high school at bat. Had five in 2023. That was his sixth in 2024. So a small sample size, but he's got another hit, and that's going to be a successful sacrifice. Morell moves to second base and kind of limping after that bunt there. Right. 
Stavalone came up a little bit gimpy on that uh, bunt, but he goes back to the dugout without, without any further attention. Sinemincid has put a runner on in every inning. And in all innings but the third, they put a runner in scoring position. Actually, I'm sorry. In every inning except for the fourth, they put a runner in scoring position. Because Noah Harvey had a triple in the third, came around to score on a sack fly by Kulik. And he has been the only anchor to Sinemincid's offense so far. But the lineup does turn over to Noah Harvey. with Mike Kulik on deck for Sinemitson. One ball, one strike. McCracken looks back at his opponent on second base and delivers a 1-1 right down the pipe, one and two. Little floater out towards right. Harvey's going to contribute again, but it's a foul ball. Close, close call. Fly ball, Harvey crushes one, that one's over Dempsey's head. That one gets down, he's got another extra base hit. Harvey trots into second base, Morell coming around and they cut into the deficit at 6-2. RBI double, Noah Harvey. And the future spider gets one down at 6-2. I mean, for a kid that had a sub-1 ERA last year and McCracken touched 87 in bullpens over the offseason, it's not like he's been doing bad. You know, he has, he has been there when they need it most, and even last year he had a bit of a rocky start and followed that up with one of the best campaigns and one of the best late-season turnarounds, especially when we, when we needed it in the South Jersey Group 1 playoffs that I've ever seen. 1-0 to Mike Kulik. Both dugouts standing here in a crucial part of the ball game in the middle innings. 6-2, Audubon in the fifth. McCracken steps off. McCracken right now over the 60 pitch mark. Cinnaminson does have another arm warming up in the bullpen. Outside. That is number seven, Michael Beers. And yes, spelled B-E-E-R-S. Two oh. This one's hit well. Shallow right center field. Nobody got a beat on it except for Bannell. He made the catch running in. Everybody was a little hesitant there. Two down. Here's Matt McCloskey, a man with a great power swing. He is built for situations like this. The tall, lanky, but yet strong, number three hitter in the order for sentiments and looking to do some damage. I think he might have an opportunity here. Skips in, 1-0. And even if he doesn't do damage with the bat, he's got good plate discipline. We've seen it tonight. He's 0 for 2 with a fly out and a strikeout, but he's worked McCracken well in those two at-bats. 
best thing you can do here is just hang on and see what he can do. If he hits it to you, just hope the wind doesn't screw you up too much. There's a strike. One and one. Our broadcast schedule for this upcoming week. Uh, Sunday is going to be the Ralph Shaw Consolation in the Championships. As we said, Consolation game 12 o'clock, Championship game 3 o'clock. Eclipse pending on Monday is going to be Woodstown and Pennsville. We'll keep you updated. I, You know, I've had games canceled due to rain. I've had cancels, uh, cancellations due to snow. I have never had a solar eclipse cancellation before. But because it's in April and the window for... Um, for the eclipse doesn't end until 4.30, which is 30 minutes after the scheduled first pitch. We'll see what happens. Here's a pop-up. Wiltsy's got it. We'll talk about that and more at the bottom of the fifth. Sinemanson gets one back from their anchor tonight, Noah Harvey. He drives in one on an RBI double, but is left there, 6-2. Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. Well, there's some folks in the grandstands tonight that are keeping warm. That blanket takes up about three rows of bleachers. They are must they must be incredibly comfortable up there. But they seem like they're having fun. And so are we. 6-2 Audubon here in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch rocketed. That is a fair ball. Left field line. That's going to be a base hit for Jack Dempsey. He rips one into the corner, and he's got a base hit off of Allison Droney. I'm surprised he's still in the game. I mean, like we said, they had Michael Beers warming up in the bullpen. So I don't know how long that's going to last, and I don't know how long it's going to take for Teasdale to, to pull the plug, but we'll have to see how long that holds. Cop set, or rather uh, Bryce Dempsey showing bunt. That one is a foul ball up the line. One's to count to Bryce Dempsey. Runner goes. Here comes the throw down. It's going to be. Did he get him? No. Just a little late. The throw was a little off, but it ended up almost being a miracle. If he could have gotten him in the ankle or the foot and gotten the tag down, but no can do. Stolen base for Dempsey as his brothers is down in the count 0-2 at the dish. It's the 0-2. High and away. I mean, Dempsey's of a little smaller stature. So the strike, zone, the strike zone does work in his favor. I can't blame him there. But Bryce and Jack, both twins. That's a swing and a miss. 
one of the oldest in the class of 2024, July of 2005, still like, you know, four or five months older than me. But here is now Car uh, Charlie Capsetta. Capsetta swing and a miss. I mean, it's always a great thing, you know, here with Audubon, they've got one of the most tight-knit communities in South Jersey, and this is my third year covering Audubon baseball. My last as a student here. I'm not sure what the plans are after 2024, whether I continue or whether, whether I don't. I think the Audubon media program might take over. I'm not sure, but... Obviously, you know, for everybody that, is, uh, that has supported me at Audubon over the years, it's obviously uh, very meaningful to me in the fact that Audubon really jump-started my career. Copsetta pops it up. This one's headed for the bullpen. Look out, Nick. Speaking of, Nick Caladros is warming up in the Audubon bullpen. One one. That one misses. Dempsey scrambles back to second. Two balls, one strike. Runner in scoring position for the Green Wave, looking to extend the lead a little further and add a little more cushion. That one goes to the backstop. That one just cleared the catcher's glove, and it's 3-1. Again, if you're Eric Teasdale right now, part of your mindset has to be thinking of, you know, how long are you going to let this stand until you take him out of the game? I mean, you know, I'm not saying he's doing a bad job, but, I mean, I wouldn't say anybody's doing a bad job as a pitcher, but... You just have to consider, here's the current situation. You're down by four, you've got a runner in scoring position, and you know that Audubon's bullpen depth is deep. You've seen them play the last two years, you know what they have in their arsenal. So the best thing you can do, honestly, is just, you know, play your cards right. And I know it's pretty obvious to say, yeah, play your cards right, but you just have to be thinking short term here. Allison Droney surrenders another walk to Copsetta, and now it's Connor Chester. Copsetta has reached base for the second time today, and Chester 0 for 2. A strikeout and a ground out that hit off of L.C. Smith, uh, his ankle. Ooh, takes up and in near the shoulders. 0 and 1, or 1 and 0 rather. As we said for the rest of this week, Depending on the eclipse, it's Woodstown and Pennsville at a 4 o'clock start on April 8th. That'll be followed up with two off days and then Haddon Heights and Audubon on April 11th. April 12th is going to be some JUCO baseball. That is Ocean County versus Camden County College on Friday the 12th. That's a nine-inning game. And Saturday, we've got a DWB doubleheader. It's Lenape and Cherokee at 11 a.m., followed up by PVI and Gloucester Catholic at 6.30 at Belmar Rec. April 14th will be a doubleheader in junior college softball between Cecil and Salem Community College. It's 2-0. Oh. Allison Droney at 43 pitches. He's been working hard. He's been out there, you know, this is only the second pitcher that Cinnamonson has wheeled out besides Elsie Smith. So you got to think of how deep that bullpen is for Cinnamonson. It's probably... I mean, I'm not trying to play games here, but it might not be that deep. I mean, you know, look, they lost a lot of guys last year. They lost some of their most important guys in their lineup. They still have Harvey. They still have Kulik. They still have the core. They still have, the, they still have their top three, Harvey, Kulik, and McCloskey from last year. But what matters is in the details. You know, the they, they always say the devil is in the de in the. In, oh, my gosh. That's not what they say. They say the devil is in the details. But... Here we go. Three balls, two strikes. Connor Chester looking for his first varsity hit in his third at-bat. And here's a fly ball, right field side. This is shallow. 
Three guys going out for it, and it drops. But it's a foul ball and a tumbler in right center field. Three balls, two strikes, one out, and two runners on as Audubon looks to extend their lead here on this Saturday afternoon. 4.05 the local time. Swing and a miss. Two down. And now you turn the lineup over to Tyler Wiltsey. Wiltsey is technically 0 for 1. He had a, a strikeout, a walk, and a fielder's choice in his three plate appearances so far. The pitch from Allison Droney fouls it back 0 and 1. Wiltsey's putting his heart and soul into that swing. You know, he knows that he hasn't played the way that he wants to play. Not that he's played in a bad way, but he knows what he did last year to Cinnaminson. And he wants to repeat it. I mean, I'm not saying he wants to hit a homer every time, because that's not how he thinks. That's just kind of how it happens. 0-1. Line shot, there's your base hit. It's in the right center field. It's going to split the gap. Diving and trying to get there. He can't get it. It goes to the 351 sign. Wiltsy's going to round second. He's going for third. Here comes the throw down. It is going to skip away. Two-run triple, Tyler Wiltsy. And after that triple, Tyler Wiltsey drives in two, and now Eric Teasdale will come out, and he will pull Allison Droney from the game. So scoring on that play is both Dempsey and Compsetta. Wiltsey gets the third. Allison Droney is out, and we will have another DWB pitching change. We'll be right back after this, 8-2 Audubon. New pitcher for Cinnaminson. That is number seven, Michael Beers, the senior. And with two outs on the first pitch, there's a base hit in the center field. That's an ultra quick RBI. Trent Bannell drives home another, and it is 9-2. I mean, this is wildly different than the first two times Audubon played Cinnaminson. This is just, it's very different. Can't say anything else than that.
Back to Zimmer now. Two runs in the third, four in the uh, in the uh, fourth rather, and three in the fifth. Side is retired. Fielder's choice. Damage is done. Audubon leads 9-2 after five. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned, full-service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all-natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high-pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs. New pitcher for the Green Wave here in the sixth, Nick Calandros, the Greek freak on the hill, moving from third base to the mound. And it looks like Gabe McCracken will remain in the game at third base, so it's just a simple switcheroo and a swing and a miss. 0-1 oh to Cinnaminson. Calandros, the junior, 2.62 ERA last year, 34 and two-thirds innings, 40 strikeouts, 13 earned runs. They say and he went. And it's 0-2. Swing and a miss. He got him. One down. So first strike out of the frame. Here comes Gideon Crisp now after the strikeout to Allison Droney. Breaking ball gets in there. Crisp 0 for 2. First inning ground out and a fourth inning double play. So not exactly the most beloved uh, stat line for him, but... He's going to try to turn it around here in the sixth. I mean, hey, it's it's no secret. You're running out of outs. You've only got five outs left. you got seven runs to make up. And obviously, this is a much different game than it was last year. I mean, hey, not easy. And if the final is going to be a three-time repeat from last year... Kingsway and Audubon. Here's a ground ball to third. McCracken is there. Throw to first Whoa. is high, and it gets away from Chester. That'll be an E5 against McCracken.
He had a normal ground ball. The throw just got away from him a little bit. And now maybe this sparks a fire in Cinnamon's belly. And now here's Logan Hamill. Logan Hamill, two for two. He's been an unsung hero for Cinnamonson with two singles. He just has not driven any in any runs or he hasn't scored. Furthest he's gotten is second base. I mean, hey, he's, he's given Cinnamonson a lot to work with with those two singles. And he might have number three here. Here's a fly ball right center field. Bannell calls for it, backtracking, and he makes the catch. Two down. So here we go again, this time Zarnowski. Lines one third base side, McCracken is there. And that'll be a scoreless frame again. Cinnamonson down to their final three outs. We'll see if they can mount something in the 11th hour or if possibly for the third year in a row, we'll have a Ralph Shaw finals rematch. We'll be right back, 9-2 Green Wave. Bottom of the sixth inning, Audubon with what probably will be their last go around at the plate. But they have been red hot productive since the third. I mean, look, two, four, and three, it's no joke. You know, they uh, have really put Cinnamonson behind the woodshed and they've put them in a tough situation. I mean, only four batters each came to the plate in the first and second. And then you follow that up with seven in the third, eight in the fourth, and seven in the fifth. It's a grand total of 22 batters in three innings. And it's not even a mercy rule. You know, look, Cinnamonson got out to an early start, got out to a 1-0 lead, and now Furness sends a fly ball left center field. He's, he's been seeing the ball real well tonight, and somebody lost their hat. Is that, oh, that is um, second baseman. Wow. I, I swear the wind has changed directions at yeah. least it's come at least three or four times. It's like bang this way. Popped up, shallow right. 
who's got it. Kulik slides Kulik. and he makes the catch. He lost his hat and his sunglasses. That's and that see. is Let's see. Out number uh, out number two. I saw everybody running in. I'm like, wait a second, what is going on? Yeah, I, I Talk about a quick inning. Yeah, they're all going back down. So Furness and Calandros quickly retired now for Jack Dempsey. He's got a hit of his own tonight as the breaking ball from Beers catches the zone, 0-1. Back-to-back -back fly outs and Audubon, still with nobody on, takes down. Game started around 2.15, so we are just past the two-hour mark. Is it in the system? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fly ball right field. Kulik is there. He's gotten a lot of work tonight. He trails okay. to the left and makes the catch. We go to the top of the seventh. 9-2 Audubon. Oh. Popped up. Shallow right. Who's got it? Kulik slides, Ooh, and he makes the catch. He lost his hat. Josh Nolan on the mound here in the seventh inning. It's the last stand for Cinnaminson who it is very, very quickly appearing that the Ralph Shaw tournament is going to be an exact 2.0 copy paste of last year. The third place game would be Bishop Eustace and Cinnaminson who remember Bishop Eustace threw a perfect game against Cinnaminson last year. So maybe if there's a different pitcher on the hill, the result might be different. Ground ball. Wiltsy's got it at the edge of the infield. The throw is offline. Man, what a web gem that would have been if he had made that throw, but just too many moving parts and Chester got pulled off the bag. That's going to be a base hit. So a single for Morell, he's two for three. That one misses. Now it goes to Dan Stavalone. Two balls, no strikes. 
runner on first. Senna Minson trying to get business here versus the new Audubon pitcher, Josh Nolan. There's a the strike. Two and two. Josh Nolan had a one ERA in seven appearances last year. He really held down the fort, and even in a small sample size for Audubon. Runner goes. That one's outside. Zimmer throws from his knees. The throw is offline, and Morell gets in at second base. Count is full. Well, if you're Cinnamons, and this is the perfect opportunity right now. You've got a full count. You've got a runner in scoring position. The bottom, of your, the bottom of the order hasn't done the most heavy lifting, but now you've got Harvey on deck, Kulik after him, McCloskey after him. That's a one, two, three of bad news. Time is called. Ooh. A little close call there, but. Nolan looks down second and delivers a three, two fly ball. Left field hit well. Going back, Copsetta backtracks. He makes the catch in center field. Morell goes to third. There's out number one. One away. Lineup turns over back to the top. for Noah Harvey. First pitch to Harvey. Breaking ball, strike one. Don't forget to stay tuned for the Harper Driving School post-game show and our player of the game interview. That's a ball, one and one. I mean, Josh Nolan is probably in his biggest stage that he's seen in the high school level so far. You know, and in one of the premier tournaments in South Jersey. He's played the game well. But that one misses, it's two and one. And with every ball, with every pitch, Cinnaminson's dugout gets ever so slightly louder. And that's what you need for the Pirates. You need a little positive thinking. You need a little affirmation. And there's a fly ball by Harvey. That's going to split the gap. But no, Copsetta makes the catch. Here comes the throw to the plate. The run will score. And it's 9-3 on the sack fly. Two outs as Morell did come around the score. And here is Matt Kulik. Kulik the last chance possibly for Cinnamonson. I mean, if Cinnaminson has a player of the game, it's Noah Harvey. Had that triple, drove in the run on the sack fly. He's been there at all ends of the floor and all ends of the, uh, at all ends of the diamond. It's 0-1 from Nolan. Here's the pitch. Tapper foul, and it's 0-2. We are one pitch away from the Ralph Shaw finals and consolation game being an exact repeat of last year. Eustace and Cinnaminson and Audubon and Kingsway. For the third year in a row, Audubon is looking to clinch their spot in their home tournament. Josh Nolan, the closer, delivers. Swing and a miss. He got him, and that's a win. Audubon gets their first in 2024, and it comes in a six-run win for the Green Wave over the Cinnaminson Pirates. Noah Harvey got a last chance, 11th hour sacrifice fly. But that's all she wrote, and it's a 9-3 final. Audubon improves to 1-0 on the Young Campaign, and Cinnaminson falls to 1-1 after their win at Bordentown on Monday. Cinnaminson got their runs very sporadically, if you will. One in the third, one in the fifth, and one in the seventh. And two of those three came on a sacrifice fly. We're still mulling over your player of the game, but 
when we have that option, we'll bring it back to you with the Harper Driving School Player of the Game post-game interview right after this.
production that you guys had. I mean, you guys had 22 batters come to the plate in three innings, and it was, I think it was seven, eight, and seven. Not batting around, it wasn't like you were killing them, but you guys were really putting the bat to the ball and just doing a great job. I mean, this is obviously after the first week of the season got rained out over the first couple of games. You guys are going to have a busy schedule ahead. Seems like you guys got some good practice in in the first week. How do you feel that you guys are prepared going into Sunday? I'd say we're pretty prepared. We've been practicing all week inside, sadly because of the rain. Could have, wish we could have played those two games that got rained out, but, you know, weather doesn't work always sometimes, and I think we're going to do really good tomorrow. Yeah, and I mean, look, this is the third year in a row that Audubon is playing um, Kingsway in the Ralph Shaw final. It's basically a copy-paste of last year, the same consolation game at noon tomorrow, and the same championship game at three. You guys beat Kingsway last year. The magic is still there, and you guys will see if you guys can uh, hang on to it. So that'll be us it for us today. Vince, can you do me a favor and grab me my pen? Because we are going to continue our DWB tradition that we started earlier this year. We are going to have the player of the game sign the winning scorebook. So just grab that and make it nice and big on the bottom there. And then we'll have two more games tomorrow. 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock consolation game and then the championship game and there you go nice and big nice cursive signature there and a little bit of an angle for Mr. Furness thank you very much for your time and that's all for us today so you can go grab your things and uh, make sure you say hi to your teammates because we've got a good game tomorrow Bishop Eustace and Cinnaminson is the consolation game at noon championship game Kingsway and Audubon for the third year in a row at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Of course, we've got a busy couple of days coming ahead in our week, but that is all for us today. Two games up, two games down, two games to go. That's all for us here on DWB. From everybody here, my social media coordinator, Anthony De Palma, our graphics crew, Gavin Van Rell, Caleb Lane, and Liam Nolan, my wonderful producer, Vincent Folkt, I'm Dan Wilkins. We'll see you same time tomorrow for Cinnamonson and Bishop Eustace in the Ralph Shaw 